gospel lesson comes from Luke 22, verses 14 to 20. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat until all it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks Thanks be to God. God. Will you pray with me? God of the past and the present, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be mingled with your spirit as we remember your divine presence and deepen our understanding of your gracious acts in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Amen. Amen. Last week, we opened our series entitled, This Holy Mystery, a series on the Holy Communion. And we are delving into deep aspects of this sacred and mysterious meal. Exploring first how we are called to come to Christ's table with joy in our hearts and thankfulness for what God is doing in our lives and in the world around us. I know that focusing so intently on joy within this celebration of communion is counterintuitive to some of us. Many have been taught that this meal is all about Jesus' death. After all, we do share in the body and blood of Christ here, right? So we are spending this Lenten season delving into the sacrificial and sacramental meal because there is so much more theological understanding of Holy Communion than the somberness that often accompanies it. It is my prayer that through learning more about the deeper meaning and un- that undergirds this meal and partaking of it in different ways throughout this season, that we will grow in our knowledge, experience, and practice of the Eucharist. So that each time we come to this table, we will be filled to overflowing with the grace of God and sent out to love and serve as whole and holy members of the body of Christ. This week we draw our focus to the words that are often carved into communion tables, as is ours. And it is on the table in the back. We have it on several tables because we have joined the body of Christ together from various locations. It is also often sewn into pyramids that lay on the tables and the pulpits and the lecterns. Words that have been repeated in this shared meal again and again. Do this in remembrance of me. When Christians gather for communion, part of the story we tell is about the last night Jesus shared a meal with his disciples. The scriptures tell us that he took wine. He took that from the fruit of the vine and he gave thanks and he shared it in the breaking of the bread and the cup. They drank, they ate. 
And Jesus told his disciples to do this in remembrance of him. And so we do, in our communion liturgy, include the retelling of that story, calling us to think about Jesus as we partake how he lived, how he taught, how he died, and how the Holy Spirit continues to carry out his work in this meal and in our lives. The word translated from Greek into English as remembrance is also rendered as a less common word, anamnesia. We're all familiar with the form of its opposite, amnesia, right? The loss of memory. Amnesia was first used by Plato and literally translated as the loss of forgetfulness. With dementia, with Alzheimer's plaguing our society, we know how hard it is when we forget how hard it is for individuals and for families and friends, people struggling to remember who they are and who their loved ones are. Having personally gone through this in our own family, it is heart-wrenching, as you all know, I'm sure. Amnesia, the loss of forgetfulness, is an, intentionally, is an intentionally practice of remembering, of surrounding one's self with mementos and trinkets from the past, items that will trigger memories and emotions that go along with them. I don't know if any of you, we're on this mass clean out the closet venture, and we have many, many mem mentos, boy, I can't say that fast, mentos in our household from multiple households that have ascended to ours. It's a lot. And I find that I intend in my goals to clean out three closets on Friday. I got through one. Why? Because I sent, sat there and thought about even clothing that I remembered wearing, even items that I had been given from in-laws, parents, grandparents, even great-grandparents. You know how it feels when you come across that old trinket, something you have had from years back that an old friend has given you or a beloved family member and just seeing it and holding it again has the power to take us back and make us relive the emotions that go along with it. The days of that memory, they reform in our mind, don't they? This remembrance, this amnesia, that our scriptures calls us to experience in communion is sort of what is happening, one part of what is happening, when we take out those mementos. We are called to remember Christ, to remember that we are loved and accepted, forgiven and welcomed into a relationship with God first and foremost through Jesus, to remember all that Jesus did and continues to do through us in his life, death, and resurrection, to remember who we are called to be as followers, as disciples, how we are called to live, to love in our daily lives, in every aspect of our daily lives, in every place of our daily lives. But does this call us to remember? To lose our forgetfulness simply suggests we shouldn't let the bigger picture of faith slip out of our minds? Does it mean we 
reminisce on the suffering of Jesus so that we really feel thankful or really awful as we partake? Remembering Jesus through communion is much more complex than simply a thought exercise, exercise or nostalgia. This is this powerful remembrance that influences not only our thoughts, but it should influence us on our actions and our identity every time we partake. And it should hold on into our minds in every day. The remembrance we are called to in communion is much like the remembrance of a wedding anniversary. It's more complex than simply a recollection of that day and its celebration. But ideally, it should be a time of reflection on how you're doing in your relationship. How faithfully are you living into the covenant you formed however many years ago it is? It should in compass the celebration and the joy of that day. Expressing thanks for the ways you have supported each other over those years. And a recommitment to continue living out the promises that you have made with one another. Do you hear all that's going on there? It's not just hey, I remember that, or the funny story that might have happened, or forgetting rings, or whatever it might be. Yeah, there's a story there. But the remembrance is a remembrance of who we are, recommitting to this journey of being together, in this case, in relationship with God, every moment of our lives. This time of remembrance and celebration is more than a fleeting thought. But it results in action. Strengthening relationships and binding couples closer together as they remember, reconnect their wedding day. That's what's happening in the Holy Communion, in this sacred meeting. I've heard of a variety of, of um, theologians and commentators suggest that opposite of remembering isn't actually forgetting, at least not in community. The opposite of remembering, they argue, is dismembering, pulling apart that which belongs together. Think of it like a jigsaw puzzle, okay? Um, a jigsaw puzzle, and I recently did this with my dad, right? You put it on the table, and there are pieces all over that table, right? They're not connected, but their purpose is to go together to see a picture, right? It is in the times of separation that we need to hear even more louder Christ's call to draw close, to share in fellowship, to build a community of love and care for all God's children, to make a difference in the world. As we come to the table today, I'm going to invite you to remember, to reconnect with all of what it means to follow Jesus in your heart and in your life. To remember who Jesus was and is and what he came to teach each and every one of us, but also to remember who and whose you are. In communion, we remember that we are the body of Christ, my friends. The hands and feet of Jesus here and now called to teach about the love and to live it out in compassion 
for all God's beloved children, including us and all who we live, work, and play with. Through this time of remembrance, we are all made whole again as the body of Christ. And then we are sent out with the Spirit's blessing, with the power of God's grace, because that's what's happening. When I consecrate these elements, the Holy Spirit is turning them from bread and juice into the body and blood of Christ for us to partake to take in and to go out. So I'm going to invite you this morning to see the broken bread offered to you as a charge, a challenge, as if each person in this room and at home today were given a piece of the puzzle and asked to work together to make something cohesive out of the many pieces. As we partake this morning, we will do so in a way that helps us experience this remembering and this reconnection. Rather than coming forward, as I kind of alluded to earlier, to receive the elements, I am going to ask you to gather in small groups. doesn't matter how many. There's no exact number. It's not complicated. Just move, okay? You're going to move and make circles. There could be a circle here. It might not be as big a circle over there. There might be an oval, it may not be a circle, maybe more of an oval in the middle. You can gather around the baptismal font in the narthex. Gather around it. And I'm going to bring one of the sets of communion on our table today that I will consecrate to each group. And I want you, as you reconnect, remember yourselves as the body of Christ, I'm going to invite you to share that communion around your group. And I'll come and receive them at the end. Don't get too focused on the logistics. Focus on the reconnection, the remembering. As we share in this sacred meal. And I'm going to invite you to stay there in this community, in the circles or ovals or whatever you create, box, I don't care, whatever shape fits you. I'm going to invite you to stay there. When everybody's been served, we're going to say the prayer of thanksgiving together. It'll be on our screens. You'll be led in these times of groups with Anthony and Lydia sharing in song. I invite you to share this role, this fruit of the vine, to pass it to each other, to serve each other. And as you do so, I invite you to remember what Jesus was and is for all of us. And to remember and reconnect with those as you share this sacred meal, as we celebrate being members of the body of Christ. Called and sent forth to serve and to love others. May this time of remembrance inspire us, transform us well beyond this time of worship, influencing our daily lives as we interact, love, and serve our neighbors in the name of Christ. Amen. Let us join in sharing these words in remembrance of me, the prayer song this morning.